Hi all, Dr. Raman Sakuja here, consultant psychiatrist in Cardiff and an honorary professor of psychiatry with the University of South Wales. I make videos in this channel to give you topics of common mental health difficulties and give you tips to manage these conditions to the best of your ability. So today's video, we are going to be talking of yet another sleep disorder, which is called narcolepsy. So let's see what it is. So narcolepsy is a sleep disorder of increased daytime sleepiness. It is usually classified under the hypersomnias. And what are the clinical hallmarks? Well, the hallmarks are is excessive daytime sleepiness, there's cataplexy, they can be hypnopompic or hypnagogic hallucinations, there's sleep paralysis, and there's fragmented nighttime sleep. So, what are the different types of narcolepsy? Primarily, there are two types. So, one is called the type 1, which is generally with cataplexy, and in this, what we see is the sleep onset latency is less than eight minutes or there are SOREMPs. I will explain these terms in subsequent videos. And in addition to this, there is the CSF hypocretin deficiency. Then there is the type 2, which is without cataplexy and perhaps slightly more commoner than the type 1. So let's see these in a little bit more detail. So coming to excessive daytime sleepiness. Now this often is the main complaint that people have and that is of chronic sleepiness and usually it is more or less constant. That is, it is all day, every day. And usually it is the most disabling symptom that affects people's functioning. Then what is cataplexy? Cataplexy is generally bilateral, that is both sides of the body and it is a sudden loss of muscle tone primarily of the postural muscles and it can be provoked by strong emotions such as laughter or anger etc and generally it lasts less than a few minutes most commonly is partial and there is no loss of consciousness then we have hypnagogic or hypnopompic hallucinations and these hallucinations are that occur from the phases of transitioning from either from sleep to wakefulness or from full wakefulness to sleep. Then we have sleep paralysis and there is sleep fragmentation at night. All of these together lead to daytime fatigue and sleepiness. What are the causes of uh, narcolepsy? Now we know that there are many hypocretin system abnormalities. That is, the system that helps keeping us awake is at fault in this condition. And then there is a genetic component as well. And as high as 98% of people who have the type 1 narcolepsy have the HLA-DOB1-STAR0602 star genotype. I know it is a bit of a mouthful, but that's the technicality of this. How do we diagnose it? Well, we look at the clinical features. Then one of the essential components is the polysomnography, the PSG, along with what we call as the MSLT, which stands for Multiple Sleep Latency Test. And we also do genetic testing to look at that genotype. What are the treatment goals? The treatment goals are essentially, number one, to reduce the excessive daytime sleepiness. Number two, we look at managing that cataplexy. Number three, we have to improve the nighttime sleep. And lastly, it is very, very crucial to address any psychosocial and comorbid problems that are associated with this disorder. So if any of you or your friends or family who are suffering with this condition, please go and see a qualified specialist or someone who has an interest in sleep medicine who is able to help you manage this condition. And if you have found this video informative, please don't forget to press that like button, comment, subscribe, share it, and then please press that bell button icon so you get notified for all the upcoming videos on this channel. And thank you once again for staying with me till the very end.